into a better squid here. Third squid for the morning. I actually moved spots. One thing about winter I find is, is that you obviously get quite a bit of rain. And we have had rain recently, up until the past few days. And all these areas along the Mornington Peninsula into Port Phillip Bay, they drain out a lot of that fresh water. So your inshore grounds, they, they get a lot of fresh into them and the squid Sorry. don't really like it. So I've moved out to seven and a half meters and you start to get a little bit better sized squid. So these are more, when I'm coming out for a squid session, the kind of size squid I'm looking for, I'll just get him out of the water. Okay, so this one's come on what is possibly the most effective, one of the most effective jigs ever designed in the history of squid jigs, and there wouldn't be many people that would argue. It's the Shimano Cephia in 14T. It's such a simple jig. It's got a white glittery cloth on top of a UV Kamura body, and it just works an absolute treat. It's now got Yamashita's warm jacket technology on it, which makes it better, cloth's a little bit tougher. It's just extremely effective, this jig. So I think every single squid angler should have at least one of these in their tackle bag because when times are tough, this is the kind of jig that you want to pull out. It's, it's a really, really good jig. And when I am fishing for, you know, squid port Phillip kind of inshore grounds, not going for those, you know, big southern squid, that's the kind of size I'm looking for. You know, they're not those little ones that are about, you know, the whole size of the hood. It's, you know, probably yeah, that 20 to 25 centimetre hood. This is a great size squid. This is the kind of thing you want to come out, get your bag of 10, I don't want to spend all day doing it here in winter. I want to come out in the morning, get some squid, go home, cold night, have a really good cook up of squid. This is the kind of thing I'm after. So if I can get, you know, nine more of these and get my bag on these, I'm happy. And, um, and you know, and that should be the goal when you're fishing these, these middle to, to, to northern areas of Port Phillip Bay. Okay, on to the second one. Um, feels like, you know, another good size, good size squid like the one I got earlier. So the important thing is when you're bringing in a squid, just keep your line tight. You don't have to take things really fast. You don't have to wrench him in. Um, you never really know. I mean, look, this one's pulling on pretty well, actually. He's not a bad size. You never really know how it's hooked, and that's why I always suggest taking your time. Um, you know, you can lift and wind, and if you're not comfortable lifting and winding like I'm doing now, just keep a consistent wind on him. Um, there's a bit of weight on this one here. I'm even thinking it's potentially a cuttlefish. Um, yeah, geez, he's pulling back on me well. It's interesting, he's either a good sized squid or I reckon the way he's pulling, it's very interesting the way he's pulling, it's a cuttlefish. And do you know what? I think that this is an arrow squid. And it is. So it's a good size arrow squid too. Arrow squid aren't overly common in Port Phillip Bay, but as you get out into these um, deeper waters here, they definitely fight different. That's why I kept saying something feels a bit different. As you get out into deeper waters of like seven and a half meters plus, you start getting them um, quite a bit more commonly. So it's another advantage of moving out deeper is you, you get into a few of your different cephalop cephalopod species. <coughs> In places like New South Wales, and once you get into, I guess, southern New South Wales as well, um, they're a lot more prevalent, a lot more prevalent offshore, the arrow squid. But the, um, I should just be able to pick this guy up like this. They make awesome bait for a host of species. Uh, a few friends of mine will be very much at this time of year asking to take this guy and drop him down for a broadbill swordfish. And uh, there, yeah, there you go, arrow squid. So, again, it's one of the advantages of moving out that little bit deeper is you get some different species like this guy here. Okay, the tackle sponsor for this episode is Shimano and they do have a very excellent range of eggy product. Uh, starting out with the rods that we're gonna be using, we've got two of these on the boat today. It is the Cephia BB. Um, it is from their JDM series, so originally on the Japanese domestic market, Shimano now bring it in here, so it does come in that very cool Japanese clear plastic box. We're using their Cephia jigs, which are very cool. There's two kinds, there's the BB, uh, blue packet, blue feathers, no rattle, and there's the SS, which is the pink packet, pink feathers, and it has a rattle in it, but the same colors across the range. And then the big thing that we're using for this episode is the all new Stratic FL. And the model that we've got here is the C3000. So that means it's the compact body, 
3,000 size spool, so you can have it for multiple uses, but when it comes to squid, it's excellent because, you know, if you want to go out and target them in 50 metres, 100 metres tip run, or just throwing down jigs in the deep uh, for arrow squid, collecting them for bait, perfect size spool, or if you're doing the more shallow water stuff like we're doing, it's great. So this has got a long cast spool. It does cast a lot further. So high gear, very, very important that when you're using, uh, when you're squid fishing, you have a high gear reel because when you're doing that aggressive action of whipping it, you want to be able to collect that line as quick as possible and get to the next jig. So it's much harder to do when you're using a standard speed reel. So this is a high gear reel, which is absolutely perfect. These are gonna retail for about 390 bucks. At this price point, I'd have to say it's probably the best thing on the market for squid. So if you're looking for a uh, new squid reel, I'd hold off a little bit longer and grab one of these, because with that long cast spool, high gear, that compact body is the perfect size for any eggy rod. It's great. Um, it's pretty much a stripped down Stella. It has all Shimano's best features in it. Extremely smooth, that great drag system, silent drive, and micro module two gearing. So now we're gonna move into where you should start when you're looking for a good eggy spot. Okay, so where to find a squid spot? Look, finding a squid spot really isn't difficult, especially if you're fishing somewhere like Port Phillip Bay. The water's clear, and therefore you can go to places like Google Earth. Google Earth is amazing. Whether you're land-based or by boat, you can go through and you'll be able to see probably out until almost eight meters on some of those shots, and you can actually see where there's big patches of weed and reef and that kind of thing, and that's what you want to be fishing on with you know good sand patches amongst it. Now, the other thing that you can do, drive along, look for spots, mark them as soon as you found them. So once you've actually got your spot, what you want to next look at is what the tide is doing. You always kind of want to time squid around tide changes, like two hours before, two hours after, but they will bite all the way through the day. So let's say the tide was coming in uh, and the tide's coming from the south. What you want to do is be on the southern side of the reef, so you're drifting along the reef and not off it. And then basically you repeat. And that's what I generally do all day. Sometimes I'll chuck my Minkota down to hold me on a really good hot spot. But failing that, you just want to keep repeating your drift. So you never ever stay in one spot for too long, never ever anchor, just keep drifting over it. Once you are drifting over it, you want to be casting with the drift. The reason why you want to cast with the drift is because that's going to get your jig to the bottom. And your jig getting to the bottom is really, really important. Squid are generally sitting in that kind of bottom meter of water. It's simple, it's effective, but you've just got to remember, cast with the drift, watch what the tide's doing, get to the top of your reef and drift over it. I think it's a very good idea to be moving away from that three to four meters, getting out five, six to eight meters. You'll find that they cop a lot less pressure, those spots, those kinds of reefs. The bite's hotter, you'll catch a lot more squid and you'll catch better size too the deeper you go. So that's the basic simplicity of it all. Just follow that and you should be right. Okay, I'm at my spot. I've positioned myself about 20, 30 meters before the productive ground I want to cast over. First thing I do is grab this rod at the rear. It's another Cephia. It's got Shimano's uh, C3000 Stella on it, which is absolutely awesome too. And I have a 3.5 size jig. Now I'm in six meters of water, minimal current flow. A size 3.0 is fine and that's what I'm going to use. But for my drifter, I want it that little bit heavier. So like it sinks in the water column that little bit more because as I'm drifting, it's never gonna make the bottom, but I want it to sit that bit lower so it's not just under the surface. And a 3.5 is that bit larger, so it's gonna be seen from a distance. Then on the rod, I'm gonna be working and manning. I have the 3.0, this is in um, Shimano's banana prawn color. It's a really effective color. And the reason why I've chosen this is it's got glow attributes and the water's pretty much that color there. And I don't know the reasoning behind this scientifically, but it's always worked for me. It's just from practical experience. I try and match my jig to the color of the water and the kind of color of the ground I'm on. So if I'm in like really clear shallow water and it's that broken brown kind of ground, I go for like red foils and gold foils and those kind of cloth colors. If I'm in that deeper water and there's just a bit of dark weed at the bottom and the water's a bit green, these are the kind of colors I go for. If it's really clear blue water, I get blue jigs. It's not a huge range of colors that Shimano offers, but it's big enough that you're covered for all bases and it's a really effective color range. So when it comes to color, there's lots of theories about sun up, sundown, all that kind of thing. Yes, early mornings, gold falls and red falls are good. Late at night, red falls are good. But the basic premise that I follow is just to kind of match the conditions I'm in and it works for me. So once I've got my jig ready, basically I move up, I've positioned the boat so I can fish up here from the bow and I can cast forward at all these lovely sand patches and reef in front of me. So I cast out, I give it a pretty good cast, and I leave my bay alarm off. 
You'll, you'll learn the basic weight of your jig and how long it takes for it to sink, but I want to make sure it hits the bottom. And by leaving my bail arm off, making sure there's enough slack out, my jig will sink to the bottom. Now, because we're not in a high current area, there's not a lot of water movement, and these are a good quality jig, these Shimano Cephia jigs, it's going to sink nice and stable with no line tension. It'll just find its way into the current and it'll just start sinking down like this. And potentially a squid's already hit it, you don't know, but that'll often be the case. You'll be talking to your mate, you'll wind up your slack, and there's a squid on. Now, the next thing I do now is I basically want to call them in. Um, and you do that by jigging your jig. So it's flicking it up, so it's darting up through the water like this, and that's going to make it noticeable because the squid could be sitting 20 metres that way or 20 metres that way. So basically, they've got such a big eye, they can see that from much further than 20 metres, and it's going to start bringing them in. Um, the SS jig that I'm using at the moment is also equipped with a rattle, so it's got some sonic attributes too. And basically, I keep doing that until the bite gets hot. Once the bite gets hot, I stop jigging it as much and I just let it sink down and spend more time towards the bottom because I know the squid are there. But at the moment, I'm trying to get them to come to me. I've got my one out the back. I'm working this one here. Shouldn't take too long, too long before I hook up. When it comes to line and leader with your eggy setup, uh, I'm using 12 pound um, Shimano Kairiki, but 12 pound braid. Um, always use braid and then I use a 12 pound leader. Some guys go lighter, some guys go heavier. I think 12 and 12, is a really good match. Just make sure the diameter of the braid and the diameter of the leader are about the same or make sure that the leader is a bit heavier. If it's the other way around, you, you get into all sorts of wind knots and issues. So 12 and 12 works for me. I can pull it out of snags. I can stop any squid that's gonna come onto it. I can cast far, it's still nice and sensitive. And in terms of mono or fluorocarbon, I really, after years of catching squid, don't think it makes too much of a difference. And these days I probably opt for mono more just because I like the way it knots. I tie FG knots as my join and I like the way that it, the braid pinches into the mono better. Um, but you know, fluorocarbon's probably gonna be a bit better in high pressure situation like off piers or in shallower, super clear water. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. You can overcomplicate this stuff, but we have such an amazing squid fishery you really don't need to. So you've always got to be careful translating information from countries like Japan to Australia because it is a lot tougher over there. They probably need to focus on more one percenters than what we do. Squid fishery is so good here, you know, you, you, you're pretty much right using, using a mono. Okay, so we've just moved spots. I've come from, you know, where I was pretty close to the shore earlier, right out into the middle of the bay, kind of towards that mud island region where you've got a lot of these shallow grounds with lots of weed. And uh, first cast with the uh, banana prong colour, and I've hooked up. And, you know, not a bad size squid, just your little ones, but they're the kind of ones I'm after. Just, you know, have some fun, get a bit of a feed. Um, but I really do like this banana prawn colour. I've been using it for a while. It's got nice black bands for contrast, it glows. That Yamashita warm jacket that the Cephia jigs use, you know, means it holds some heat and it really stands out. And it's a really effective colour for pretty much any time of day. You can use it at night, early morning, middle of the day. And when I'm in this greeny coloured water, I like matching my jigs to the colour of the water and, and that does it perfectly. Uh, so it stands out, doesn't look odd. Um, and the squid love it. So I'm gonna, it's pretty hot around here. Uh, and I saw a few squid uh, follow this one in. So I'm gonna quickly put this one in the live well and then just get another jig out. Cause um, I reckon we're about to get onto a hot bite. Just hooked up to another one. Didn't take too much longer. This one's got a bit more weight to it, which is good. One thing I've done is I've spot locked this onto the productive ground. And basically I'm just gonna fan all my casts around. It's one of the, the, the great things about having um, an electric motor is I know there's squid here. It's good ground. I've basically got 360 degrees of of productive ground around me and I'll just fan my casts all the way around and if I'm not picking up squid uh, I'll move again and I'll keep drifting. Again still in that you know it's a small size squid but it's a good size squid makes nice rings you know and makes nice bait and that's the size I'm after and you know I think we're at about five or six now uh, maybe even more because we threw a few back um, and you know before lunchtime you have your bag and that's the beauty of squid fishing you can come out have a fish bring the kids um, have some fun, get a feed, and you know, you don't have to spend all day doing it. Yep, just got onto another one. Hoo -hoo. He wants to pull a bit too. Um, it feels very strange because it's not a squid. It is a cuttlefish. Now, I love cuttlefish. Another one, you know, you could call it bycatch, you could call it just. You know, one of the species that you can catch when you're, um, when you're working squid jigs. 
Um, I love them because they taste amazing and they're amazing bait. Amazing bait for gummy sharks, amazing bait for whiting, and they do taste really good. The cuttlefish will stay down lower in the water column. He'll pull very differently, he won't pulse um, quite in the same way that a squid does, so you can tell the difference. And as you've, you've seen today, I could straight away tell when something different was happening when I got the arrow squid and then with the cuttlefish as well. But yeah, keeping your jig down on the bottom is the way you pick these guys up. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're great eating. And as I said, great bait. Well, there's your drifter in action. And you know, there was, there was one drifter to the three captures we got on the jig that we were working. Um, but that's why it always pays to, you know, have it out because you just get that one extra squid from it. I'll grab my net for this guy. With your squid that are drifting, just always have your net ready to net them because when you're working your jig and you're doing that jig technique, you're actually striking the jig and it's bringing the barbs up, you know, into his legs or it might be in the top of his head depending how he's come up to grab it. Um, generally, when the, they grab it as a drifter, it'll just get hooked in their legs and if you pull them up or you go to grab them, you can just rip the legs off and you lose your squid, lose a couple of legs. So uh, just always pace and knit them and again, it stops getting ink all over your boat. Yep, onto another one here. And I've got two sitting just below it. So what I'm going to do, they're right under it. Get the cameraman to come over and you'll be able to see three of them all just there together. So what you should be able to do, the other two are a little bit bigger, I think. I can pull this guy up. He's about a bit too big. And watch this, I should just be able to hook the next two. There we go, he's coming for it. Now... He's grabbed it, and what you want to do is strike. And you'll see all the ink come out because I've set the hook. And there he is. And the squid death roll. You just want to keep them, never bob them up and down, bring their heads up. If you keep their heads down like that, you're not going to get ink all over yourself in the boat. Now, I should just be able to thread the line through my hands, grab the jig, and pick him up. And when you hook them like that, it's because you, because I actually striked, and it turns the jig around because he's grabbed it, he's grabbed it like that, and then it turns it around and it hooks him in that way. And that's a good size. And the other ones, they'll probably still be hanging around. So in those situations when there's two of you, get your jig back in the water, get your mates to get your jig back in the water, and you have fun getting your, your triple hookups and all that kind of thing. And look, we just we drifted past where those squid were, but I was pretty certain that they would just hang around in that same spot that we just drifted over. Um, so I just cast my jig towards the back of the boat and there's that third one and it's possibly, they sometimes get that aggressive, this is possibly even the, uh, this is pretty risky business, face full of ink business, there we go, no, possibly even the one I lost. It's always good what I just got my cameraman to do, which was very nice of him, was just hit mark on the sounder. So you just know that was the spot they sent, they were kind of congregating around. So when you drift through it again, you kind of know, okay, this is where they were last time and take your time making sure you really cast over it nicely. Well, that's it for the day. I've had about enough. We started fishing at eight o'clock. It's now 12 o'clock. So a good four hours, uh, caught a hell of a lot more than the bag. Um, the gear was fantastic. The standout jigs was definitely the banana prawn in this greeny colored water, still clear, but Port Phillip Bay's got a green tinge to it. It's always awesome, so I highly recommend if you're fishing Port Phillip Bay, the banana prawn. The other big standout was the glow pink banana prawn, and then the other one, which was obviously always gonna work very well, was the 14T, the UV Kaimura. Uh, can't say good enough things about the new Stratic. It is extremely smooth to operate. That long cast spool means you can punch them out a really long way, and that high gear makes working your jig with that aggressive jig action very, very easy. The Cephia BB rod is beautiful blank at a really good price of around $250. It's got the grunt to lift the smaller squid straight in. You can control them and you know, you could tangle with any squid of any size and it'll do it. So the gear was great. I got a lot of squid. I think the big thing to learn from today is make sure your jig hits the bottom, Keep doing your drifts and keep repeating those drifts. When it goes quiet, move to a new spot. Visually look in the water and try and find good productive ground. The weedier it is, generally the better it is. Um, and have fun. That's about all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to uh, like it, subscribe, um, jump on our Facebook page and like that too. And always remember to go into your local tackle store and pick up Hooked Up magazine for free. Uh, thanks heaps for watching and we'll see you on the next video.